going on you guys it's your man james aka jp back again with the toy room now about a year or two ago i did two videos talking about the top 10 video games in my collection one video was for the top 10 super nintendo games and the other was for the top 10 nintendo 64 games and i was just recently re-watching those videos and i realized that i had a lot of fun making those videos and i'm not sure why i never really continued so that's what we're going to be doing here today in this video we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 nintendo gamecube games in my collection now keep in mind these are just the games in my collection so if you seeing some games that are missing like maybe like a mario kart or a zelda game or something like that it's because i specifically don't have it in my collection or i might have just left it off the list because this is just my top 10 games my personal favorite top 10 games in my collection so with all of those little rules and caveats out of the way uh, let's go ahead and get right into it now before we start i did want to mention one game that i did have to leave off of the list because of a technicality i was fighting which game to keep on the list which game to take off and um, I decided to keep off the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition. Now, the reason I decided to keep this one off the list is because this isn't technically, you know, like a specifically GameCube game. This is just a compilation of past Zelda games from the NES as well as the Nintendo 64 and whatnot. So that's why this game just didn't make the cut because of that technicality. And because of that, it's not making the list. I'm going to go ahead and throw it right back on the shelf like so. And now going ahead and starting the list, starting off at number 10, it's going to be, and this is gonna surprise a lot of people, this would probably make nobody else's top 10 list other than myself, and that's going to be NBA Live 2003. Now, NBA Live 03, uh, I specifically grew up playing the version on the PS2, and now I own every single version of this game except for PC, but I own it on Xbox, GameCube, PS2, um, PSP, like every, every platform you can possibly own it on. And NBA Live 03 is, I have a lot of nostalgia for that game because I, I played it so much growing up, but it's just such a good game. It's one of the better NBA Live games ever made, and probably one of the most, if not the most iconic game soundtrack of all time. It was such a good soundtrack that the game, well, I don't i don't think the GameCube one ever did, but I know like the PS2 version came with a specific separate soundtrack that came with the game. That's how good the soundtrack was for this game. And this was also the last game that had Michael Jordan in it up until NBA 2K11, I believe, when they did the whole Jordan version of 2K and all that. Um, that this was the last game that had Michael Jordan as a playable character in it. So, um, I, man, this, this is just one of my favorite games, one of the best soundtracks of all time. And like I said, it's a game that I specifically grew up playing a ton and um, a lot of nostalgia. So that's why NBA Live 2003 makes a list all right and next up is probably a game that would be on a lot of people's lists and that's going to be nba street volume 3. now what was really cool specifically about the gamecube edition was you can see right here featuring mario all-stars so if you got this game on the gamecube you can play as mario peach and luigi and that's just really cool and it's really funny to see these cartoon characters that are like two three feet tall going up against all these nba legends and whatnot it's really hilarious to play um, but it's a cool little bonus an extra incentive to seek out the GameCube version. I don't know if the GameCube version is more expensive uh, because of that. That I'm not really sure. I don't really keep too in track with the prices of games nowadays. But while basketball is my favorite sport of all time, um, there's just something about going back and playing the NBA Street games nowadays that's a little difficult, mainly because it only has one camera angle. I really wish you can switch out the camera angle to give you more of that 2K style of camera. So that's why NBA Street V3 uh, goes so low on the list at number nine, but it's still a great game. And of course, having the mario all-stars in there is just a really nice bonus on the gamecube all right and uh, next up at number eight i know this list is going to confuse a ton of people because we've already had two sports titles on here and um next up we're going with kind of an obscure game i guess and that's going to be aggressive inline now this game does not get enough love i do not hear anybody talking about this game quite as much as they should it's such a great game and it came out at the time when like tony hawk was like at the top of its game and then you had all the other you know other just EA sports style like SSX and all those type of crazy you know sports and outdoor activity games aggressive inline is such a fun game it's a rollerblading game and the soundtrack on this is is phenomenal as well this is a game that has another amazing soundtrack and it's just a ton of fun to play the story mode by yourself or of course obviously playing multiplayer with friends trying to beat them out and get the highest trick combos and all that um yeah aggressive inline super underrated game and that's why it's going to come in at number eight on my top 10 list all right and coming in at number seven it's going to be a game that i do not have the case for so i have it in this little protective 
film right here, but that's going to be Bomberman Generations. Now, this was a different Bomberman game from anything really that came out at the time with all the little animals and stuff that you have to find. I'm not even sure what the companions are called in the game, but it's a really fun game, and it's another game that I, I had a lot of nostalgia for growing up. I'm not even sure like how I got the game because I didn't know anything about Bomberman at the time. I don't know if my parents just thought it was cool and bought it for me for Christmas. Honestly, I have no clue how I got this game in my possession at all, but I am glad to have it. It is just a ton of fun, so much to do. I think, I don't even know how long the story mode is, but it lasts quite a long time. I don't even think I've actually ever fully beat the story mode, so it's something that I do need to go back and play. And while the story mode is fun, so is multiplayer. It's your typical standard Bomberman type of gameplay. So not only could you sink a ton of hours into the story mode of the game, you can also sink a ton of hours into the multiplayer and just have countless uh, fun with your friends. So at number seven, Bomberman Generations. All right, next up, coming in at number six is going to be uh, what I feel is another underrated game, and that is going to be Beautiful Joe. Now, when I first played this game, it absolutely blew my mind. It is such a beautiful game with the cell shaded art style, and the gameplay is really unique, and it's got this whole like movie comic book type of feel with the slow motion effects, and man, I really love Beautiful Joe, and I'm not sure why going forward. They, they made a sequel to the game, but I'm not sure why we really didn't get any other games. It's, it's a really unique game made by Capcom, and um, this version is specifically for the Nintendo GameCube. Now, I think the sequels were actually made uh, multi-platform, if I'm not mistaken. I think they came out on the PS2. I do have the sequel here. Um, and the sequel does not have that only for Nintendo GameCube on there. So I'm pretty sure that they went multi-platform uh, for the second one. And um, they're both amazing games. I only put the first one on here because that's what I have more nostalgia for. But you can't go wrong with either one. And like I said, it's it's amazing gameplay. Such such good graphics. And uh, it's, it's sad that Beautiful Joe has never um, had a sequel or like an HD remaster or anything like that. So uh, number six spot, Beautiful Joe. Go play it if you haven't, super underrated. And now coming into the top five. Now this is probably where I'm gonna lose a lot of people. This game would be number one or at least number two on a lot of people's lists, but for me, um, it's just, it's going at number five, man. And that is going to be Super Smash Brothers Melee. Often regarded as the best Smash ever made. Um, it is a great game. Like, there's not much I can say about this game that you don't already know, but the vast improvement going from Smash 64 to Melee from the gameplay, the graphics, the characters, items, everything was just like multiplied by a hundred for this sequel and it still holds up to this day. Like I said, people still consider the best Smash to ever come out, one of the best fighting games. It's still played in tournaments to this day, which really uh, speaks for how well this game holds up. And it's a great game. Uh, I played it a ton as a child, but there are just other games on this list that me personally, um, I enjoy a little bit more. Not to say Smash is a bad game. It's at number five, so you can't go wrong there. But um, there's just other games that mean more to me or I have more nostalgia for, and that's why Super Smash Bros. Melee only makes the number five spot. Coming in at number four is another game that I do not have the case for, um, but this was actually the first GameCube game that I ever owned when I got a GameCube. I, I think uh, Mario Sunshine might have been the first because it came bundled with the GameCube, but this was the first game that I went out and purchased with my own Christmas or birthday money, I can't remember. Uh, that's going to be Star Fox Adventures. Now, a lot of people hate this game, but I absolutely love it. It could be a nostalgia thing for me because like I said, it's the first GameCube game that I bought with my own money. And the reason behind that, it's actually pretty funny. I'll just tell the story really quickly. Uh, we went into, me and my brother, he took me to go buy a game. We went into Toys R Us and originally I wanted Metroid Prime. And he told me, you know, no, this game looks kind of stupid, you know, um, let's see what other games there are. So I say, okay, so we look around, we couldn't really find any other interesting games. So we finally decided, fine, we'll get Metroid Prime. And we went to go get Metroid Prime and it was no longer on the shelf anymore. Somebody had just bought the last copy of Metroid Prime that the Toys R Us had. And we were pretty much screwed at that point. So my second choice was Star Fox Adventures. And um, it's a game that I grew up playing. I love the gameplay. It's not your traditional, obviously, type of Star Fox game, but I think it's a really great game. I think a lot of people have learned to, to come around to love it over the years, but I still don't think it gets the amount of love that it deserves. But for me, it's always going to be one of my favorite games of all time, and it's going to be my f number four spot for the top uh, GameCube games in my collection, and that's going to be Star Fox Adventures. Very underrated game. Definitely go ahead and try it out if you haven't. Okay, so coming into the number three spot, honestly, spot one, two, and three really could all be moved around. It really depends what mood I'm in, but Coming in at number three is going to be one of my not only 
favorite GameCube games of all time, but one of just my favorite games of all time, and it's multi-platform, so it doesn't matter what system you play it on, but I personally own it right now for the Nintendo GameCube. That's gonna be NFL Street 2. This is hands down my favorite NFL Street game. It has Exhibit right here. Some of you know him from Pimp My Ride, others you know him from being the rapper, but uh, Exhibit is in the game. The story mode is great. You can create your own character. Tons of fun that you can have with the story mode, and then countless hours that I've sunk into this playing multiplayer. Still to this day, anytime that my cousin comes over or I have friends come over, we pop in NFL Street and we just have a blast. Uh, really a spiritual successor to the NFL Blitz series, but just so much you can do with this. I am absolutely in love with this game and uh, man, this game never gets old. I'm honestly wanting to play it right now just even talking about it, so I might even pop it in after I'm done with this video, but <sighs> such a good game. And uh, it, it's kind of funny that, you know, basketball is my favorite sport, but NBA Street really isn't as good to me as NFL Street. I just love NFL Street and that's why NFL Street 2 makes the number three spot on my list. All right, so coming in at the number two spot, that is going to be Def Jam Vendetta. Man, and can you guys see? I still got the original like GameStop tag on there for $49.99. Def Jam Vendetta, man. One of the best and most unique games of all time. Now, while Fights for New York obviously went and just took this game to a whole nother level like this game actually seems a little bare bones when you compare it to fights for new york but def jam vendetta we never seen anything like it at the time and we still after def jam i guess icon technically the garbage one that they made on the 360 and the ps3 we haven't seen anything like it since i'm not really sure why but man this is such a great game putting all of my favorite rappers and musicians into into this fighting game and just having I don't know, man. We've never seen anything like it. It's so crazy just seeing rappers in a wrestling game, but it's not just your traditional wrestling game. It's like a street wrestling game, and man, I, I, there's not much I can say about this. Obviously, this, like I said, Fights for New York is the better game. Unfortunately, I only have that on the original Xbox, not the GameCube, so that's why Def Jam Vendetta takes a spot, and it's at the number two spot. But man, it's such a unique game, and I absolutely love it. All right, and the last and final game that's coming into the number one spot is going to be Super Mario Sunshine. Now, a lot of people don't like Super Mario Sunshine because of the whole flood water jetpack mechanics and stuff. I love it, and it may be a little bit of nostalgia because it is the first GameCube game that I had because it came bundled in with my GameCube that I got for Christmas, but even going back and playing the game nowadays, it's still a ton of fun. I absolutely love this game. I've beat it on the GameCube, and then I went back and beat it when the Wii was backwards compatible. I put it in the Wii and beat it on the Wii, and then I beat it on the HD collection that came out on the Switch. This is such a good game that does not get enough love. I, I love it. And the graphics, the graphics still hold up to this day. It's an amazing looking game. Something that you can just put a ton of hours to. I don't know how long the story mode is. It might be like... 25 hours or so maybe i'm get. i honestly have no idea but it's it's, it's such a fun game and there's not much more i can say about it that hasn't already been said uh other than it's underrated and i think that um more people need to to appreciate this game if you've never played it or if you only played it back in the day definitely give it a chance today you might find yourself surprised to actually fall in love with it and that's why super mario sunshine is going to get the number one spot for me now to be honest guys any of these games could have taken over anybody's spot it was actually really hard to make this list especially because i don't really have a big gamecube collection i don't know if you can see this spot right here on the shelf is my whole gamecube collection obviously the games that i just took out are missing here that's why there's all these empty spaces but yeah i maybe have like 20 or so gamecube games in my collection uh and most of them i found at thrift stores which is crazy because i rarely ever find games at thrift stores uh when we get into the ps2 my top 10 ps2 games in my collection that's going to be interesting because all i find at thrift stores is ps2 games primarily and then original xbox but i have so many ps2 games in my collection and i've sold off a bunch as well uh, a couple years ago and i still have a ton of ps2 games in my collection so that's going to be uh, an interesting video but that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as i did if you did make sure you like comment and subscribe share this video with your friends be sure to follow me on instagram that link's in the description down below and also be sure to check out all of my other top 10 video games in my collection videos which are popping up on the screen for you guys to click on so that's pretty much it i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here as always guys stay tuned for more and i'll see you guys next time